Welcome to this episode of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the Solo again, but we're going to be doing a bit of an unboxing. So I got these the other day. Uh, they just came in. I ordered them when I ordered the uh, the Solo. And uh, let's make sure that these are what I think they are. And they are. I'm in a rather undescript package. Um, so we should keep this bag away from babies. So now this is rather interesting. So uh, again, I ordered these for the uh, the Solo. And I noticed they're both 2.4 gig. And the size of the antennas are matching. Um, and I'm just kind of looking at it here. I, I'm kind of curious that it must use both 2.4 gig channels. Usually it uses, um, you know, Quad G's 5.8 and 2.4. Um, the standard Wi-Fi frequencies. But um, this says it comes as a kit, do not separate, so this must be the right thing. And these are panel antennas. Now, I was watching Drone Worship, and uh, with his panel antennas, with his Alpha panel antennas, he was uh, taking it out there uh, almost a mile. And that's about what I get uh, with the Agitech, Ar Argitech. Yeah, Argitech, I think. Uh, antennas on the Phantom 3 is about a mile. Uh, some other people have gotten some crazy distances. I don't know quite how they've done that. Because I've done this over the lake. And uh, about a mile is uh, what I can achieve. And uh, so I think, you know, that... Uh, you know, if I get anywhere near that with these, I'll be totally happy. These miles are long, long ways, really. Because uh, technically you're supposed to stay in, stay in line of sight. And yes, I can see a mile away. But, uh... <laughs> Um, so, now this is interesting, and not, so, yeah, uh, interesting here, it comes with a propagation map, so these work between 2.4 and 2.5 gigahertz, 7 dBi, uh, polarization, linear vertical, 50 ohm impedance, um, not really sure what's front and back, I'm assuming maybe the letters are front, because, you know, you have both forward and reverse propagation on the maps here. And both of them are the same. No real instruction. So, I'm, I'm assuming that they use basically different channels on the same frequency range. 2.4. And so these just screw on. So, very simple install. And the way it looks is you have to kind of angle them like that. Which is sort of okay. Um, so let's see, put these bad boys on, be nice if they told you which way is the front, again I'm assuming the alpha, the printed ver version is the front, maybe not, I don't know, because um, they, they tip up but, they, but you can turn them, and, and there's a lock on them so you can turn them, so I'm not really not sure, I'm going to have to do some research. Uh, on these because it really doesn't say there's no instructions in the package No instructions in here empty so if anybody's telling me I should read the instructions. There's no instructions. I hate that I get all that all the time should I read the instructions Have you been talking to my wife? I don't know, but anyways, um I, I'm, I'm pretty geeked about what I what hopefully I can achieve with with these panel antennas because I'm really, really starting to. I haven't, I haven't had a chance to fly it. It's rained for the past three days since I've gotten this thing. Just torrential rains, so I haven't been able to fly it or anything. I'm really hoping that this solves my void um, in 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 the basically 350 class, if you will. The Phantom 3, I, I like it, but I've been having, ever since I've had it, I've had on and off problems. Uh, so it's been okay. Hasn't been super reliable. I, I mean, if you, uh, I don't know where this is going to come out in the series, but uh, I've been having, I've been now getting large magnetic file, F-I-L-E warnings. I think it's supposed to be feel. Whether, why, I don't know. Um, 
you know, I've gone through and done the compass calibration and, you know, that comes out successful, but I still, as I fly it and it drops out of GPS mode, which is not something I really like. Uh, and, you know, and the second thing is on the up air, you know, that thing is kind of flaky. You got to have 16 satellites to fly. I haven't been able to get the compass to calibrate. Um, so it's been kind of a frustrating experience. The Cheerson has just been a total letdown. You know, everybody tells me that, you know, why you can mod it and make it better, but why? So I'm really looking for just something grab and fly. You like this spark. I mean, I tell you, you know, knock on wood grain or wood over here. The spark, the spark doesn't let me down. It, it flies. It does what it's supposed to do. Um, you know, sometimes there's binding and OTG issues, but yeah, you can get past it in a few minutes. Um, you know, the Phantom, sometimes I take it out and I just can't fly it because it won't do something. And the same thing with the up air, it just won't do something. And, and so it's a very frustrating experience. So I'm really kind of looking for something like this that is just kind of grab-go and it works. Uh, over the winter, I'm going to try to finish the S500 build, um, as well as build several of my own copters. Thanks to JJ Rotor Geek. I'll talk about that in a future episode, so I don't want to give too much of that a future way. So I'm going to do some of my own, but um, one of the things I'm also thinking about, because the gimbal is very hard to get from it, it's wanky, it wants a GoPro, I don't want, want to have a GoPro, uh, but what I'm thinking about doing is I see no reason I cannot install my own gimbal in one of these. So... Um, I think that's going to be a winter project is wiring the gimbal because the only thing I really do is have to bring a power and a signal and, and there has to be some sort of signal already for the existing gimbal because they probably are you know just borrowed the Storm 32 code like everybody else so it can't be too far off it's just finding the right pins and everything inside and taking a look so that's going to be a project for the winter and if that if I can achieve that and uh, with its whole cost structure I think it's going to fill a nice void because the spark is is nice for the low end and that's my typical grab and go uh, I fly it probably once every other day and you know once a week I want to be able to fly something bigger like this because if I hit a little bit of wind especially because as you guys know I fly a lot on the lake we get the winds especially as we're coming into fall I need a bigger copter uh, for those days when we have a little bit of wind because it just is too much for the spark. So that's where I'm thinking the solo might fill that void. And so we'll see and I'll let you guys know and you can come along for the ride uh, because I'm really vexing if I should buy a second one for, for 229 even though I haven't even flown this one yet. So I'm kicking around, haven't decided yet just to kind of have as a second one and start the gimbal project because I as I mentioned in the unboxing with this guy um, I, I want to have something I can fly a 360 camera on uh, this will do it and I don't need a gimbal to, to do any of that I just need the anti jello and I have that and I'm going to design up a bracket to flip the camera around as I mentioned I already started working on that so no problem there uh, but I do want a gimbaled bird, too, uh, to take the place of the Phantom 3. So, anyways, just some of my thoughts. I figured I'd share them with you guys. Let me know what you think below in the comments. What would you do if you were me? Um, and, hey, I'd like to hear your advice. So, anyways, hopefully you found this interesting. If you got a solo and you have these, let me know uh, in the comments below what you think of them. Probably by the time you've seen this, I probably hacked around and figured out which way. But, eh, hey, feel free to leave me below just in case I mess up. Also, what kind of ranges are you getting? And if you're looking for a solution to extend the range of your solo, I've put cards up there for these as well as a link below so you can pick them up off Amazon. They were like 20 bucks, Super cheap. Cheaper, even cheaper than the Ar Argitech that for the Phantom 3. So, so far... You know, with this guy, I mean, I've got, I don't know, around 350 bucks in it, even that much, because I bought, I bought an extra battery, I bought these antennas, I bought some uh, Master Air Screw props as backups, which I'll probably switch to those in the future, because I've been liking those more and more on the Phantom. And so, anyways, well, we'll see how it goes, and uh, still waiting to get that first flight in. So anyways, hopefully you found this interesting, I rambled a little bit is with the unboxing, but hey... Give it a thumbs up anyways. Don't forget the subscribe button's coming up over there. And uh, hey, let me know what you're thinking about for lunch because I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.